On a much lighter note, we are going to be heading to the kitchen now where we have a very special guest chef today. And Joe's in there with her right now. Joe. That's right, Vic. With uh, Carol Anderson. Of, um, you have, you're, you're actually a school uh, teacher of Same. cuisine. So okay. let, us, let us know about that right now, actually. Well, I Tell have us about that. my country cuisine cooking school in mm -hmm. my home. Um, small groups of people at a time. Uh, we have sometimes cooking parties, many classes, every couple times a month. All right, good stuff. Do you find that teaching in smaller groups is actually easier for the recipients there? I think <laughs> it's great fun for everyone because it's sort of like being a guest in my home rather right. than in a formal it's school. Kind of laid you know? back and people right. more comfortable. All right, right, so we're cooking a summer harvest Mediterranean trifecta today. Right, right a pasta dish with right. vegetables. So what do we have? Let's go through these ingredients. Well, um, with all the fresh vegetables this season, I like to take advantage of them right now. So we have eggplant and cherry tomatoes, fennel, my favorite, red pepper, pepper, uh, red onion, a little garlic, and some lemon later on to finish it off. Mm. And then we're going to use some sautéed uh, Italian turkey sausage because it's healthier and, and a little lighter. less greasy, you were saying yes. before as well, right? And then we're going to prepare them all together, and I'm going to puree them. Uh, the first thing, they can be actually used as a side dish. Then we're going to puree them to morph them into the pasta dish, and then the second helpings will come at the end. The big mm. surprise. Right, that's the big surprise. <laughs> now, this dish, you were saying all this uh, Mediterranean-type ingredients was inspired by a trip uh, to Europe. Well, I've, I've been or lucky because I also teach Spanish, mm -hmm. and so I've traveled to Spain and to Italy and to France many times, oh, wow. and my, my family is also Italian, so that helps a great deal. But all these things uh, come along as a healthy way to enjoy those really zesty Mediterranean flavors. Absolutely. And, and it's not a heavy dish. And my, my father's from Italy, so when I visit there, I seem to eat a lot, but it's not that heavy-duty type food, so you, yeah. you can still have a little spring in your step. Right. After. I think we can take advantage of the great ingredients we have mm -hmm. around here, especially in the summertime, to prepare this, and it's fresh and healthy and good for you. All right. Can't we wait hope. to get, uh, get involved in this recipe. We're going to start getting it ready in the next segment. Right now, we're going to send things back to Victoria on the couch. Hey, Vic. Getting ready for the recipe of this delicious Mediterranean dish that you're cooking up in the kitchen today. That's right. Carol Anderson <laughs> is here. She's a viewer. She's a chef. You teach cooking, so you're going to be teaching me how to make this Mediterranean dish. What are we making really quick? It's as simple it. as can be. These are roast. We're going to roast these vegetables, mm -hmm. and we're going to use. We've cut them all up into the same size. Actually, the recipe is going to make two trays, but you want to put them on two because you want to even layer so okay. that it roasts really. What do well. we have just while you're doing we that? We have or? eggplant. Mm -hmm. We have fresh cherry tomatoes, mm -hmm. onion. Uh, Fennel. We have uh, onion and some chopped garlic to go with it. Now, fennel is a very traditionally Italian. And it gives uh, a vegetable. great sweetness when it's raw. Mm -hmm. It's almost strong. It's a licorice, licorice flavor. Licorice, right? Yeah. But when it's when it's cooked, it becomes very sweet and it gives a sweetness to all the other vegetables. I, I was going to say this so is a sweet love dish. Them. Yeah. It is, and and we're going to of course add olive oil because we, mm -hmm. for two reasons: the flavor, and also we just don't want those vegetables to stick so much. So we're going to kind of right. mix them all up with the olive okay, oil. Okay, and I'm, I'm assuming we're going to put this in the oven. We right? are okay. going to put this in. The the oven. I'm okay. just going to make sure this up, there. up a little bit, right? And okay. then the, because vegetables tend to need a lot of salt, so mm -hmm. I always use kosher salt, and I use okay. about a teaspoon and a half for the whole recipe. Uh, kosher salt's really better for you because of the large grains. You get 20% less sodium oh, when you're wow. eating kosher salt. So it's that. a nice um, way to add a little bit of okay. healthiness. And this is, of course, ground back black pepper. Of course, I have the big fancy machine at home, but <laughs> this is going to work for today. It and works just fine. What do we have here? This is dried thyme. Okay. And thyme is a really Mediterranean flavor. It's it's a typical on meats, on vegetables, with fish and everything. Mm -hmm. And then if you want, I put yeah. some uh, fresh thyme, too, although okay. um, you Sprinkle can, it as like much as you, yes, season high, they say. Wow, so you, you know, can see the difference between the dried and the fresh, huh? Right. And I'm adding some crushed red pepper because I like it, and, and that's up to your taste. Uh, right, there you right. go. Perfect. And you can throw those other tomatoes okay, on Okay, we'll throw these too. tomatoes on it. This is, yeah, like, we'll uh, as you were saying, a real sweet dish, so. Yeah, and then we'll add just a teeny Great. bit more Look salt. Mm. Make now, sure that they're even. The last drizzle. Yeah, why not add some, uh, olive oil? Is great. You yes, can, it is, and it's it, you can't. Well, hurt, healthier you know? too than than. That's right. The other types. And of you know the thing about roasting eggplant is eggplant tends to suck up oil like crazy. Absorb everything. But yeah. in here, it's going to caramelize and it's going to sort of dry out a little, and that makes it healthier as well because you're not getting this great quantity of oil like that you would get in a fried right. eggplant dish. Gotcha. So, so we're going to. This goes in the oven? 425 for 25 to 30 minutes. Okay, we are just about out of time for this segment, but when we get back, we are going to start uh, cooking up the other part of the recipe, and uh, it's already a very colorful dish, so it's only going to get better. Vic, we are going to send it back to you. Right, we are making, uh, we've pureed these vegetables that were in the oven, if you saw in the last segment. I just want to show the folks at home. John's going to get a shot at this. This is what we made, basically, before, and that's what it looks like, but... But Carol put this in a blender, and it turns into that, is what, what you see on the, um, 
the stovetop here. It's amazing the consistency. It, there's no cream or anything added into this, right? There's I nothing mean, extra. And the only <laughs> thing we're going to add are a couple little things to kick up the flavor a little more. Which is always good. And, right. <laughs> and one of the most important things when you're, when you're fixing pasta is to add some of the pasta water right. to the pan that you're making your sauce in because it's, it helps the pasta to adhere then to the sauce. So I'm adding uh, okay. a little bit of this pasta water to thin it out mm -hmm. and then we, yeah. al we always have to add a little extra acidity because when you're eating in a restaurant you always mm -hmm. get that finish of acidity and that's what makes you want to come back come back second and keep bite. eating it and that's a little so balsamic I'm adding vinegar, right? balsamic right. and I'm adding a little hint of lemon about a probably okay. about a tablespoon of lemon juice okay fresh lemon juice is really the best yeah there is a difference you can actually I think there yeah. is and then we're going to use bow tie pasta um, okay. because it seems to be a better way to keep the sauce on it and the creamy it sauce yeah. right the creamy sauce is good mm -hmm. and I think this is great because it's a it seems like it's creamy but there's there's, there's no cream no, at all we, I, you None. have to keep reminding me of that yep. because the, um, the the consistency is is of a cream sauce. And as you mix, what's going to happen is you're going to need more of the pasta water. And water, right? I know. I'm noticing that's that. What I'm, that's right what I'm going to yeah. keep adding because I want it to be creamy, but I don't want it to be clumpy. Clumpy, right? That's a, that's definitely. <laughs> so a key the there. pasta water will start to cook in. And also, I always undercook the pasta when I'm going to add it to a, a sauce like this because a little al dente. Right, because and also you're going to cook it more when you put so it in here. So you might as well not fully cook it. That's right, you and put the it starch the pan, then right? from the pasta will release into the sauce, okay. and you'll get even more creaminess. Oh, it looks like a vodka sauce. Exactly. Is what I, would, I would think exactly. this was if I just looked at and it. And you know, for kids, I love to feed um, vegetables to children because, especially when you disguise them. This is a great way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> because kids love pasta and they love red sauce. Sure. And so it's a great way to give them a really healthy dish without all that fat that you tend to sometimes get in a, another sauce or with some extra nutrition that is built right in. I'm going to go through really quick what we're looking at in this sauce again. It's uh, We have uh, eggplant, we've got cherry tomatoes, we've got red onions, we've got fennel. Right. And did I miss something? Uh, red pepper. Red pepper in there. Yep. So it's think about pepper. that when, you, when you're looking at this sauce. It was yep. just blended uh, up together, no problem with, uh, with the blender. You did it uh, in about two minutes. Yeah, very fast. Um, and okay. then now at the end, what right. we're going to do is we're going to add a few garnishes. And I like to add some turkey sausage that's been sauteed. And not and as uh, heavy this. and greasy, right? You right. Were I right always right. use turkey sausage because then you can take the fat right out of it uh -huh. and it's done, you uh -huh. know, and it's... It's it's yep. great, and there then I saved a few. No, that's okay. That looks great. I saved a few of those vegetables if you want uh -huh. to put them in, and they just add a little more a little, texture. Go and ahead a little garnish, and right? Why not? In. Yeah. Yep. Look at that. And so then you've got a little texture to your mm. sauce, and then of course I got to say we're missing something. <laughs> right, we're missing a couple of things. Now, yeah. first of all, I'm going to add some extra of the parsley that I okay. that I chopped up Great earlier. Color there. But also um, yep. some of this fennel frond, and I've had in restaurants they call it fennel pollen, which sounds ever so fancy, <laughs> but it's really just the top of the fennel. Oh, okay. Like and the, it's uh, kind of a little advertisement for what you've just made, you know, so you know what's in there. Now, does that have and a licorice flavor to it? It does, it but does. not as strong, strong as, as the thing. actual root, you okay. know, so it's 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 a good thing to... Um, and fennel is a very Mediterranean, um, you know, ingredient, it especially really in Italy, is. for sure. It really is. Okay. And so now... The other thing you can know is that this dish, before you start, if you're if you're having weekend company, you can make a big batch. Yeah. Uh, let's say lunch, you mm -hmm. can have this as your side dish for your Absolutely. grilled meat. Absolutely. Right. Then dinner time, it's a nice dinner, and then second helpings are coming later, and I'm not going to yeah. give that away. <laughs> but um, I think it's time to. Mm -hmm. Plate some up and Absolutely. Let's show some samples. This looks what do you on a think plate. about that? That uh, sounds good to me. I did notice we have some cheese here, right? And so we're going to put be, that on okay. at the very Had to last. bring that up. Now, yes. we were talking about Mediterranean food in general. It's usually pretty simple, the recipes, right? You just let you it know, be, right? I think simple's the best, always. Absolutely. And it's, in my cooking classes, I try to make people understand that even though it's good, it doesn't have to be so fancy and complicated, no. you know? The simple is always oh. the most delicious. Look at that. And so... We'll add some in here mm -hmm. for anybody else who's interested later. Actually, that's you know? all for me. And so the one thing, so the one thing that's always yeah. nice mm -hmm. at the very end, just to give it a little bit of a gloss, a just a shine tiny bit, yeah. a tiny bit, not too much because right. you don't want to overwhelm. And we haven't used too but, much olive oil anyway to begin with. It's right, not. There you go, sir. All right, I'll give well, it a shot. Give it a, give Vic, it a shot. Victoria's going to come over right now. We have a few seconds left. I'm going to send it back to Vic, but uh, we have a wonderful second helpings coming up right. with Carol Anderson. Thank you so much.
time for second helpings. Karen Carol Anderson uh, made us a uh, Mediterranean trifecta, some bow tie pasta, and a basic puree of all kinds of vegetables, and that's pretty much it. And Absolutely. this is what it looks like. We have some. It's good thing you put some aside because there's already been like three bowls of your pasta eaten in less than eight minutes, I'd say. And I probably had all three of them. Anyway, what are we making for our second helping? Well, the next day, um, you take some pita bread, which is right. in the oven there. In the oven, I'll grab and that. And I cut it up into wedges. And, okay. of course, it goes great with any kind of dip. But mm. this is up. Now I'm going to turn, basically what we did was change it into a this flavor right that's more of a Middle Eastern flavor because we mm. use the this Zatar Special spice. Special spice, right? Let's, Zatar uh, is a wonderful spice for pita bread. It, it has actually sumac in it mm -hmm. and sesame and some herbs other than that. And it's a great um, wow. spice for pita and for all, any Middle Eastern what, flavors. What, what, what does it really taste like, uh, folks at home want to know? <laughs> It's, a, it's not a strong flavor. It's just an herby oh, okay. type, sort of a flavor that goes on as savory. And I think you're going to find out in about two seconds here. Cause That's I'm right. Gonna, this nice, is like one of those things for bread. the football game. There Sunday, you go. Right? This is your we'll weekend. You. You, had, you had your first dinner with the mm -hmm. side dish. And then I'm going to put just a little pepper on this. A little pepper on there. pepper on the dip. All right. Feta. Now we've gone to feta cheese. Ooh, feta cheese. And we're going to just top it with that. And then people will get a little bite of each thing when mm. they try it. And of course, we have to have some parsley because it's nice. And then all you mm -hmm. need to do <laughs> is eat. Can I is, eat? <laughs> here's a little spatula because I can't remember what you're serving. This thing. Use that and put it on. Yes, isn't that cute? Oh, you just wipe it on there. Hey, and just put it on there um, like that. You did a great job today, and I think you've had a lot of practice. You were on national TV. I was. I was. Tell us about that real quick. Well, I was in December. I was contacted by ABC News Good Morning America, and I had won a contest for my grandmother's artichoke recipe. And my prize was to go on TV and cook with Mario Batali, which was just like a dream come true. You know? uh, another Italian chef. Exactly. So. And so knowledgeable. Did you it pick was, his brain? Did you get any secrets? I did uh, secrets? every minute. Uh, between all the segments, <laughs> that's exactly what I did. Now, it must have been amazing having him try your food as well, right? It really um, was. And he knew everything. It's funny. He knew the background of the food even before mm -hmm. I cooked it. He said, this comes from the Naples region because of this ingredient and that ingredient. And there you go. It was great fun. I'm going to take a quick bite. Carol Anderson, thank you so much for thank joining us today. Thank you for having me. Great job. Great sauce. Back to you, Vic.